escape my bride. Let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. Just where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of a speed me to steal, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. Many of the great cars in the early days of the auto industry have some interesting and unusual histories behind them. Gunsmiths, button makers, scarecrows, and saw blade makers are amongst the origins of some of the world's greatest car manufacturers. And today we're going to look at a German company that has its origins in locksmithing and dairy farming. We are, of course, speaking of Opel. And so we're going to take a look at the Grand Patriarch himself, Adam Opel. He came into this world in the year of our Lord, 1837. His father, Wilhelm, was a locksmith by trade, and the Opel family were also homesteaders as well in the town of Russelsheim, in what was at the time Prussia. Okay, homesteading is thought of to be as just an American thing, but that didn't even come about in the USA until 1862. Peasant farms were fairly common in the 18th and 19th century Europe, and the Opels were amongst this economic group. The Opel family farm was a small and self-sufficient concern that not only provided for the family needs, but also had the fruits of their labors for sale in the farmer's markets of the day. Now, young Adam was, of course, taught locksmithing by his father, and learned the various skills needed to run a farm, which includes managing the budget. He remained at the farm until he was 20 years old, which is when he got the opportunity to study abroad, first in Belgium and then in Paris. His studies were in locksmithing, but they also expanded into other related disciplines of metallurgy, forging, mechanical engineering, and other such. Now exposed to a wider range of opportunities, Opel saw and was fascinated by a fairly new invention of the time, the sewing machine. It was in 1859 that Adam Opel got his first job as a machinist for a sewing machine maker in Paris. The following year, his younger brother, George, joined him, and they both dove into the idea of improving the sewing machine. After a few years, Adam decided to come back home and establish his own company to build sewing machines, his brother George following him a year later. However, his father, Wilhelm, was not happy about that. You see, Dad figured that his sons going abroad would make them better locksmiths instead of turning trader on the trade and starting to making machines for tailors. Fortunately for Adam, his uncle also had a farm and, being sympathetic to their cause, gave him an offer. Set up a workshop in an unused cow stall he had in his barn. And so, now armed with a smelly but otherwise sufficient workspace, he established the Opel Manufacturing Company in 1862. Yes, fans of Opel cars, it all started with sewing machines built in a barn. And these were very good machines. Locksmithing requires precision, and Adam applied this principle to his designs and production. His brother George came on board a year later to help out, and within a few years, the company was prosperous. By 1867, they had outgrown the barn, and Adam rented some proper factory space in town. A few years later, he bought some land and built a new factory of his own, including an attached house for him and his future family to live in. Now having a two-story factory all to himself and no cows to get in the way, production soared and Opel sewing machines became an industry standard in Germany. Yet Adam stayed true to himself, being a man always looking for new opportunities in new industries, which led him to the bicycle. Now, Opel had married Sophie Scheller in 1867, and by the mid-1880s, the couple had five children, all boys. And the older boys were very interested in bicycles and bike racing. To be honest, Mrs. Opel wasn't a fan of the things, but Adam dove into it and bought a bunch of bikes for the family. The fact that Mama Opel didn't like them got Adam th to thinking maybe three-wheelers or large tricycles would be a good thing to make. And so, the Opel Manufacturing Company began making bicycles and tricycles in 1886. And boy, did they make some bikes. His sons began to race the bikes across Europe and won many a race, Carl and Wilhelm particularly notable. The Opel bicycle became so popular that by 1900 was amongst the largest bike makers in Germany and 20 or so years later amongst the largest in the world. Adam did live to see the invention of cars, but unfortunately passed away in 1895 before Opel would actually begin producing cars. 
His widow and five sons would be the ones to bring the company into the automotive world four years later. They could do this because the Grand Patriarch of Opel taught his sons well to be industrious, manage their affairs wisely, and always be looking for opportunity. Oh yes, we'll be talking about the first Opel cars in the future, but for now know that what is technically the longest standing make of car in Germany got its start by a locksmith in a cow stall on a Prussian homestead. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History, and we'll see you next week. Peace.